I am Dr. Doen Dong, and I'm the director of DO's Digital Research Center. The topic of today's discussion is about implant prosthetics. I'm sure other doctors will have said quite a lot about placing implants. So in this lecture, I will explain about the prosthetic process. Among this process, there is the concept of library. This is a rather new concept for most. Let me explain what the concept of library means. Let's consider the analog impression process. Implant was placed in the patient. Let's say that implant was placed and healed. If you take an impression after that, you'll need impression coping for when making an analog impression. We will perform such things as transfer or pickup impression. We will also decide whether the impression will be made at the fixture level or the abutment level. When going through such a process, we take an impression and prepare various materials. There are complex processes such as tray, thread tying, connecting, etc. These are processes that must be done in an analog method. In contrast to this, digital is simple. If we look at clinicians who are using a digital method, there are some who have only partially switched from analog to digital. And there are those who work 100% digitally without even using a model. I personally do everything digitally without using any models. Let's take a look at how the process goes. In the digital impression, there is a scan body called an H-scan body. We can create a digital impression using things like stock abutment, digital abutment, customized abutment, and the newly released eco abutment. What we need here is the concept of a library. Let's take a look at what a library is. For example, if you look at this picture, you can see a nose. You can tell that it's a dog just by looking at the nose. And when you look at this nose, you know it's a cat. We have a library of cats and dogs. So just by looking at the shape of the nose of a cat or dog, we can tell exactly what the object is we are looking at. Such pictures and bundles, that's a library. It is originally a computing term. A collection of frequently used partial programs in a computer program is called a library. Like a library, we can gather things and take them out when we need them. The library used at DIO includes H-scan body, custom abutment, digital abutment, stock abutment, and the more recent eco abutment. It is safe to say that we have the biggest library among other companies. These libraries go through a process referred to as matching. Matching as if matching a nose with a dog is called the matching process. Digital impression becomes very important. If we scan according to such libraries, fixture level impression will be taken. So whether we scan with a scan body or however we scan, if a fixture level impression is taken, we can make a prosthesis however we want it in the laboratory. They are interchangeable with each other. Let's start by looking at the use of a scan body. The scan body is coated on the top of the lid. It is also low cost. It has the advantage of making it possible to make impressions very quickly and easily. Let's take a look at scanning with an H-scan body. This is a photo of inside the oral cavity. The operation was completed using an H-scan body. We just scanned the lid of the scan body well. The picture on the right is the scanned image. The blue, red, and green dots on the upper part from the right are the coded parts to be matched. We match these. Then we put them together like this. You can see the fixture attached to the bottom. This is the fixture level impression. In the past, we would look for the implant in the image here. You can see that the scan body is now inserted into number 23. By inserting the scan body, 
It can be made while maintaining a clean emergency profile on the gums. Let's take a look at this patient case. This is the initial state. You can see the blue ball at the bottom. We use this blue ball as a matching point. The patient had an implant in the upper jaw. Here it can be seen that there is an apically positioned flap due to a lack of keratinized gingiva. The gums are deep enough for that. In this case, the gums are thick, so we will want to use a custom abutment. So we scanned using only the H-scan body from the left. We scanned using only the scan body, but then we converted it to a stock abutment. This is because a fixture level impression is taken right away. Compared to the old analog method, it is a much simpler process. When the custom abutment is made, place it in the oral cavity and take an x-ray. Then we check whether it is fully seated. Then we just need to make the final prosthesis. Here, just scanning the custom abutment will result in taking a fixture level impression. We can scan with an H-scan body and design a custom abutment level on the fixture level impression. Then when the patient visits the hospital, scanning is performed again with a custom abutment in the oral cavity. Then the fixture level impression will be taken again. The reason why this process is necessary is, well, what should we do if we've made a custom abutment in the analog method? We take an impression with it in the mouth. We also sometimes insert cords in order to secure a sub-gingival margin. It is not easy to get a sub-margin when taking an impression. Even if I take an impression like this, there will be excess cement after attachment. So if we look at this patient, we can see the swelling of the gums around the implant in the sub-gingival direction. Since the impression was not taken properly in the sub, there will always be cement excess. Such things can create abscess and cause bone loss. If you look here, there is an excess of cement. When you look at the process this patient has gone through, we can get a rough idea. At first it did not attach well and continued to not adhere well with implant cement. So in the end we used final cement to attach it and it went under the gum and it did not come out. We can see this history. When we removed it, the gums healed well. There is a problem in that you can't take an impression of the subgingival margin, so we scanned the custom abutment. Another way to do this is to create it with supra and then scan it. As you can see, we made an abutment with zirconia and then made a supra gingival using a link. If we make it like this, the margin is visible and it doesn't look good. However, this person had flapless surgery. The bone width was very narrow, so the surgery was done precariously. The patient came back after three years and the margin had broken. It was an Emax three-unit bridge, but it didn't last. According to the Emax company, it holds up well, but it broke after three years. The above picture was taken six years after, scanning the custom abutment as it is and remaking it with zirconia. You will know well from experience that flapless surgery does not cause lowering of the gums. It has been six years and there is no gingival reduction at all in number 11 and number 21. When the patient came, the custom abutment was placed in the oral cavity. Behind it, it is a stock abutment. Then it can just be scanned while worn. When adjusting, this is closer to merging than matching. That way you can see that it fits snugly with no gaps. To make merging easy, scan the abutment again and match. This is a custom abutment. If we scan one more time with the custom abutment in the oral cavity, we can get the contact and relationship with the opposing teeth with much more precision. This is an image after matching a custom abutment with it inserted in the oral cavity. This is a cross-sectional drawing. If you look at the right side, you can see that there is almost no gap and the matching is done well. In this case, even if we do not scan the subgingival margin, the impression of the sub will be taken automatically because there is a library.
We will look at this case. This is a custom abutment made to the sub of about 0.5 millimeters to 1 millimeter. Doing this will have the margin perfectly fit. There is a problem here, however. This is a picture taken during custom abutment milling. It will be cut as the burr passes like so. If you look at the top, you will see something protruding. This is the connector part or a sprue holding the custom abutment. This will always remain. You need this to cut it. Milling with the round bar will look like the picture on the left. But the problem is how good the burr is in the milling machine. We would imagine something that fits just right and we start making it. We will hope that it is just right. But if the burr is worn out, it will cut excessively. Then if a zirconia crown is made and fitted later, there will be a problem that it does not fit into the large abutment. As such, most labs cut the inside of the crown to solve this problem. This makes it loose. It is cut arbitrarily. So the patient is fitted with a loose fitting. In this case, there is a problem that the custom abutment that is made in the lab may fall out easily. If you are wondering why an expensively made custom abutment keeps falling out, it seems that the reason is that the milling tool in the lab is not properly managed. As such, it is important to use a good new burr. In order not to make a loose item, you must confirm it with the lab. So in order to solve the problem that tools for custom abutments are not managed in individual laboratories, DIO has created the digital abutment. Digital abutments can be tuned very precisely because the specifications are controlled by the company. There is a digital library and digital abutments with anatomical shapes that are made for premolars, molars, and anterior teeth. Therefore, we can have this at the clinic and can choose the right size and fit it. It is a library of digital abutment. You can see a very smooth surface. When merged, there is almost no gap. The merging is good. The crown can be designed and made. If you want it in a SCRP form, you can make it by drilling a hole. And we form an occlusal point. I took a picture of the crown being fitted to the digital abutment. This is the picture taken after cementation. It fits perfectly with no gaps. In this way, such problems as remaining cement excess or falling out easily will be greatly reduced. After the prosthetic process is conducted with the articulator, it fits so well that it barely needs to be touched up at all when inserted in the mouth. Let's look at a patient case. This is what a digital abutment looks like. If you look at the top, it has a matte finish. There is a problem that the scanner does not scan well when the light is flashing. And because it is matte, scanning works well without powder. When I inserted the prosthesis that I made, it fitted perfectly. The margin going out to the sub is perfect. There is no cement excess. The concept of digital abutment is that the cross-section is designed to resemble the cervical cross-section of the natural teeth. At the DO laboratory, the width of the cervical region was shaped as a cross-section mesiodistally and made into a library. So we can equip our clinics with a wide range of items 
and use them according to the thickness of the patient's gums. This was possible because the implant was performed with DioNavi top-down method. So there is no chance of a crooked implant. Since it was placed in the way we desired, if we design it so that the digital abutment can be inserted, no prosthesis will not fit. This is only possible with precise implants. So we can think of digital abutment as being compatible with DioNavi. The concave ones in the middle are designed to be compatible with protect caps, etc. And it is a question of how to put that tiny abutment in the patient's mouth. There is a jig here. Usually in analog, when it is sent to a laboratory, a jig is made. Like that, there is what's known as a digital abutment jig. If you look at the shape, the convex part that descends like a rabbit's ear is called B. It was designed to express buckle. It is set to the letter B, which stands for buckle. After inserting here, it is put into the oral cavity and locked according to the hexa. It is inserted into the oral cavity in this way. After it is seated, we can take an x-ray to check it, and if it has been inserted well, we can then scan it. After scanning, we can go with cementation type or SCRP type as desired. It is a little slanted to the side. If we make sure that the beveled side is scanned well, even if we don't scan to the sub, the library automatically adjusts and the scan of the sub is taken. As such, there is no hassle of plugging in cord to take a sub impression or having to control bleeding. This is a cross-sectional image taken after matching like this. Looking at the picture on the right, even though the margin wasn't taken at all, it was automatically matched. Let's look at a clinical picture, number 33 and number 43, indicated by asterisks, have had surgery. We performed extraction. We also did bone grafting. We performed such using extraction and preservation techniques. We then placed an implant and a digital abutment. There are no gaps or fixtures on the x-ray. Also, when performing immediate loading, the jig for digital abutment is printed with a 3D printer and inserted together. When you first order a guide, if you ask them to make an abutment jig, they will make it like this. This is a tool to check if the hexa has been inserted in the right direction. After seating it, it is locked with a toque. After that, we take an x-ray and scan. Let's take a look at how well it is merged. If you look at the cut picture on the left, it is fitted very well. The margin did not appear to the sub, but by using the library only on the top, margin was automatically copied to the sub. Then the fixture level impression will be taken. It is not that the fixture level impression is taken only when using the scan body, but it is also taken when a digital abutment is worn. A prosthesis was made in this way. These are before and after pictures. Number three on both sides have been replaced with implants. The gums have receded quite a lot. This creeped up on its own as time passed after bone grafting. In this case, we want to place implants in the premolar area. You see that premolar implants and the prosthesis in front of them will have to be done at the same time. Because there are caries, it is designed with a guide. Digital abutment was inserted after surgery. The buccal side is a sub-margin. Just ignore that. If the library is used to match with the lid, you will be able to take a fixture level impression even with a digital abutment inserted and scanned instead of inserting a scanned body. In this way, we designed it into a SCRP type.
As you can see, the margin fits well. You can even check such things as how many millimeters to insert with sub. Inserting a digital abutment in the oral cavity, you can select the appropriate abutment to be inserted to the desired level of either 0.5 millimeters or 1 millimeter to the sub. The margin inserted to the sub fits perfectly. In this way, we can create an emergency profile without any problems. I tend to double scan all of my patients. First, I scan with an H-scan body. I then use a temporary prosthesis to make the shape of the gums and perform a double scan. I will tell you about this in the next lecture, but it's called pre-prep scan and I am using one of the FGP techniques to replicate the occlusal surface using a pre-prep scan. I always perform a double scan. If you look at the picture, you can see that a digital abutment was inserted, not a scan body. Scanning works well because the digital abutment surface is matte. However, when scanning with a digital abutment, a fixture level impression is taken. But it is not suitable for using a digital abutment. And you just want to use a stock abutment. You can also change it to a stock abutment. This is because a fixture level impression has already been taken with the digital abutment. It was made with a digital abutment. Merging is done. After this was done, we changed it to a stock abutment. The shape changed. I changed to a stock abutment because the gum height was not at the place I wanted. Since the fixture level impression was taken, you can change it to a stock abutment. It is a very simple process. One of the advantages of DIO is that stock abutments are in the form of a library. Such a library is not available in other companies. We have libraries for both cemented abutments and stock abutments. This will be done in the lab. You can choose a stock abutment. Here's a picture of an intraoral scan. You can see it entirely went into the sub, even though a margin is formed to take a stock abutment impression. It is not necessary to do such things as laser searing and plugging in cords. You just need to scan it as it is. Instead, there is a slight indentation on the side of the stock abutment. Because this part is recognized, if that is scanned, we can use it from the library. We cut a cross-section to see how well it was merged. It was perfect. This is how we make a prosthesis. Even if you use a stock abutment, it is not necessary to take an impression to the sub. Conventional analog users may have seen the patient with inflammation of the gums in the picture earlier. We want to use a stock abutment. But when we take an impression with the stock abutment inserted, the impression of the sub is not taken. So, if we make it and insert it only to the point where the gum protrudes, we can't remove the cement excess, so an accident occurs like it was mentioned before. If we scan with the stock abutment inserted, we can create prosthesis by digitally matching margins. It is then designed in the lab. An emergency profile can be made by compressing the gums as much as desired. This is a picture of the oral cavity. It went too deep into the sub. In any case, you can just scan it to make it. But there is the question of how we are going to insert such a tiny stock abutment in the mouth. It is hard to insert it because it's so small. What appears in white here is the coping used for pickup impression. It is made of plastic. Drill a hole in the upper part here. If you drill a hole at high speed and then modify it, it can be inserted very well. After locking it this way, you can remove the white part and scan it. Unlike the jig shaped like a rabbit's ear that we saw earlier, the stock abutment is small, so it is not easy to insert it into the mouth. This is just an idea. If you insert it with the coping for pickup impression in place, you can use it conveniently. 
Also, it should be noted that it needs to be scanned so that the surface of the abutment is well exposed. At this time, a little powder may be needed. Stock abutment is shiny, so it may not be scanned well. You can just apply the powder so that the abutment surface comes out well. Then, just make sure that it is scanned well, especially this part to the side that is like a slot and which is erased and slightly slanted. Let's look at a patient case. The occlusal surface is also twisted and there is a lot of work to be done. So it seems that you have to correct the occlusal plane first. I did an immediate implant placement. I even attempted immediate loading together. During extraction, this part was placed at the same time. And I even made a prosthesis together. Many doctors use immediate loading for navigation nowadays. Immediate loading is not possible if the precision of the navigation guide is low. This is because the prosthesis that was made does not fit. However, the DO navigation guide has a small error range, so it is not too difficult to do immediate loading. The provisional restoration was replaced once every two months. After two months, the bone will have fully gone in. Whether it's a stock abutment or whatever else, we can do all the scans with a scan body. Place provisional restoration using the library, and at that time, correct the occlusal plane. This process can also be done using software. And here is a picture taken five months later. The panorama is taken with the head slightly tilted, so it is a little slanted. But you can see that it fits well in the oral cavity. If you look at the margins that go into the sub on the panorama, there is almost no gap. This seems to be the power of the library. You can achieve perfect margins using a library. After about five months, Patients usually gain weight after implant placement due to being able to eat better. They can also take photos with a smile more confidently. This is a photo taken four years later. Even after four years, the gums are still in good shape. There is a slight gingival recession in the anterior maxilla, but it seems that the patient has been brushing their teeth too hard. In any case, the posterior implants are maintained very well with no bone loss. The various digital solutions created by DIO are being studied hard by the staff and directors of the DIO lab, generating many innovative ideas. Also, such things have been well accepted by the company, and now there are many solutions out there. In particular, we are holding a monopolistic position in the case of solutions for edentulous patients. That concludes my first lecture. Thank you for listening. Hello again, this is Doon Dong of Dio Digital Dentistry. The second lecture today is about the pre-preparation scan. In Korean, it could mean preparing before scanning, but what it actually means, scanning before deleting tooth. I will explain how that function works or how it can be used clinically. First, how to form the occlusal surface. I want to wax up like this with three feet, like I did when I was doing wax up in the analog method. Let's see how we did the analog method. How to bring up the patient's occlusion. Methods to bring up the patient's occlusion is to use a customized incisal guide table or the FGP technique. 
I will first explain the customized incisal guide table. The dentist will usually want to retain the patient's anterior guidance. So we make a customized incisal guide table. If you use a regular normal articulator, you won't be able to reenact the curve on the left picture. It will only be able to reenact a straight line by adjusting to the incisal guide table. Curved line or straight line, you have to use the incisal guide table and you have to use a more than semi-adjustable articulator. Like this, you can use the incisal guide table or you can make a customized guide table. This is so that we can transfer the patient's anterior guidance to the final prosthesis. So we use a method like this, using resin that suits each patient, not into guidance that is in a straight line. Then, like the picture on the right, individualized, customized incisal guide table can be made. So we make prostheses with this. If you take a look at the process, first you make a study model, then you face bow transfer it and mount it on the articulator, and you decide whether to use the patient's anterior guidance. After that, you do diagnostic wax up and make a temporary prosthesis. Then you seat the temporary prosthesis in the patient's oral cavity and fine tune it. After that, you make a study model with that prosthesis state, face bow transfer again and make a customized guide table in that state. And then you take a final impression, make a working model, seat the customized guide table, make the prosthesis, and then seat it in the oral cavity. This goes through a very complex chain of process. The second method is the FGP technique. Let's see how this goes. FGP stands for Functionally Generated Path. The path is copied on the occlusal surface when it is placed in the patient's oral cavity. So it reenacts the dynamic eccentric movement of the opposing cusps. To achieve optical articulation and occlusal harmony, this is the practical method to reenact the anatomical site of the occlusal surface. But this is also not an easy process. If you look at the methods that I quoted from the journal, you have to take an impression, make a plate with resin, leave tooth number 36 and 37 areas open like this for prosthesis, make a temporary crown with the suitable material, and place resin on the occlusal surface. Place dual layer resin on top and have the patient function. After making the patient function, take an impression inside the oral cavity with the functioned resin and transfer it to the articulator. It will not be in the shape of the opposing teeth, but will be in the shape of the guide path. If you do a wax up, thinking this is the opposing teeth, you will get the occlusal surface. And if you make a gold crown with that and put it in the oral cavity, there won't be much adjustment to be done. This is the FGP technique. It is cumbersome. This is how it is done digitally. Pre-preparation scan. Scanning before preparation. So we keep a data copy of the tooth shape before deleting the tooth. This is a paper published in 2006. This talks about how to form an occlusal surface digitally. There is something called pre-op. Empress is something that was made with actual wax up. Serac is designed on the monitor with a computer. The vertical axis is the contact number. Compared to the Empress, digitally made model, has much more contacts. 
which is similar to the number of contacts before prepping. So this means that you can make a more accurate occlusal surface digitally. There is barely any need for adjustments. It is actually better to design on the computer, and it is very practical. Let's see how to maintain anterior guidance digitally. This is the same situation. To reenact the external diameter of the maxillary tooth number one on the lingual side, I didn't use an incisal guide table. I just saved it as digital data by scanning it. Therefore, I could just copy its state as it is. Let's take a look at this patient's case. This case has not been closed yet. There are lots of cavities. Before you cover it with a crown for cavity treatment, you'll see that the guidance in the palatal area is maintained well and is not disappearing. I wanted to reenact the patient's occlusal without changing it. I scanned the file before prepping, and when I send this to the lab, they can merge the files by bringing it up. The blue is the original data. The gray part is the data after it was pre-prepped. Set up the occlusal plane. And merge them together. The merging area is done arbitrarily by the computer, and you must match them precisely. Like merging by three points, it is the same as merging in the implant studio. Pick the teeth in the same area on the incisal edge or cusps. This automatically merges the image files before and after preparation. Check how accurately it is aligned by drawing a cross-section. You can see that it is merged without much error. Check this first and start designing the teeth. And we can move to the next series of prosthesis-making steps. Then you'll automatically get calculations of prostheses number 2, 3, and 4. You have to modify the prostheses a little bit. Align the prosthesis that was arbitrarily placed in the closest area closer to the purple image, which is the image before preparation. If the purple and white color is barely transparent with each other, it means it is aligned well. You can go through the process of placing it in the closest area. Because this was a case with lots of caries, there are dented parts where caries were scanned. Make those areas bulge a little. Align the images like this, designate it with a purple dot, and this completely merges to that area automatically. This area where it is designated is also merged automatically into the shape of the original teeth. Now the purple area. 
the area with errors have disappeared and all the lingual and labial surfaces have been reenacted. You can just fill up the dented area where there were caries. The natural tooth surface will be regenerated and you can also see that the occlusal point on the lingual side has occluded well. You can use a smoothing tool to smoothen out the rough areas. This way, you can reenact the lingual and occlusal surface without changing them. Then you can put it in the milling machine. This is how the zirconia crown is made. The lingual surface has been reenacted, and anterior guidance, canine guidance, have also been reenacted. This is a case where you want to reenact the occlusion of the provisional restoration. Let's look at this patient's case. This patient doesn't have the posterior teeth. I placed implants in those areas. And using the teeth on the anterior, I made an anterior guidance and also set the VD. The abutments placed here are the eco abutment that was newly developed by Dio. The picture on the top right is the base abutment. With this fastened on the spot, only the prostheses on the top are removable. This makes the patient less uncomfortable and also bleed less. And I also expect less bone loss. This is the picture with the abutment on. So like this, the prostheses are made in the oral cavity. The patient will have this on for two to three weeks which will automatically set the functionally generated path. PMMA material is very soft, so it will have formed an occlusal surface with some abrasion. To copy this occlusion to the final prosthesis, you have to designate it as a pre-prep tooth when scanning in the clinic. It only takes 90 seconds to scan. Designate the teeth as pre-prep teeth and begin the scanning process. This is a faster way of merging compared to the merging process in the lab and it is also technically convenient. This is the PMMA that the patient is wearing. If the patient thinks it is comfortable, height and guidance is okay, then you can scan it as is. You can also make a copy of the occlusal surface or the shape into the final prosthesis. When scanning the final prosthesis without changing the shape, you can move the scanner in a zigzag motion to lessen the errors. Scan once like this. This is the pre-prep scan. After this, you must designate the pre-prep teeth in that area. Check if it is scanned well. And if you designate the teeth, they will be deleted. Those designated teeth will be deleted, and if there are remaining parts, 
Use an eraser to delete them. Use an eraser tool to delete the area that is not deleted properly. Delete the area that is going to be scanned. Right now, the patient is wearing a stock abutment. Even with the stock abutment, if we use Dio's library, you can get a fixture level impression. PMMA on or off, with scan body or stock abutment on, or with scan body of an eco abutment on. Whatever is on or off with the pre prep scan, you can get the desired prostheses on the fixture level. Align the images based on the two anterior teeth and scan the deleted area. Then it will cover the stock abutment. When scanning a stock abutment, the stock abutment's shaved surface must be scanned well to lessen the merging error. Also, the stock abutment reflects light so you must use a powder and lessen the reflected light to scan well. Check if there are no gaps or holes. Change it into black and white mode, and you will see it more clearly. I think it is scanned well. Now scan the opposing teeth, and scan the bite. There are abutments consecutively. If there are natural teeth in the middle, it will align better. Check the bite and designate the teeth by that number. Send this data to the lab and the work here is done. When the lab receives this data, it will be transferred with them automatically put together. Then the prostheses will be calculated automatically and will be formed arbitrarily. In this data, the scan body is placed on the eco abutment. Computer calculated prostheses are formed arbitrarily. Merge them to the pre prep teeth and design the prostheses. Design it including the value on the inner side. This is the same as the general method. There is an eco abutment on the bottom. I used a stock abutment first and changed it into an eco abutment. After prosthesis design is over, 
You have to supplement these prostheses. Just like before, align the image with the pre-prep scanned image. You can see that the images are out of line. Move them so that they are aligned closely. After that, designate the aligned prostheses so that they are automatically formed. Mark each tooth, and it will be calculated automatically and will roughly align with each other. You can click and calculate and repeat the process. Calculation is over. This will put it to the nearest area. And you can see that it is aligned well without any purple areas. The rough surface can be smoothed out. The path of the patient's lingual occlusal surface has been functionally generated. Because it has functioned in the oral cavity, the occlusal surface, canine guidance, and anterior guidance will be reenacted as it is. Now we'll see some cases that use this method. This prosthesis is reenacted and placed in the oral cavity. This is in a PMMA state. You can see that the occlusal points are dotted well. This is another patient's case. He is a 77-year-old male. I am about to remove the mandibular teeth and put prostheses. He wishes to maintain the maxillary teeth. He did not want to change the VD. So after placing the implant and maintaining the VD, I made PMMA. I made him function with the prostheses in the oral cavity because I wanted to maintain and copy its guidance. I made the posterior first. While making anterior and posterior, I placed a scan body for the anterior and made the posterior first and made a PFM. I made it into a metal occlusion and the anterior still have PMMA. The occlusal surface was reenacted well. I wanted to use a pre-prep scan function To transfer the anterior into final prostheses, guidance and such was maintained and has transferred well. Here is a next case. This patient had barely any teeth to preserve. He came in like this. I thought it best to leave some natural teeth. So I measured the VD first and I checked to see how much the occlusal surface has tilted. I placed the implants. I left three teeth in the posterior area. These teeth had some bone left, so I left them for proprioception. I used the material from Dio to make a temporary crown. The posterior teeth were too far apart, so I am in the process of moving them through orthodontics. Make the anterior guide and canine guide on the maxillary. 
It has come thus far. The temporary crown will have adjusted during the orthodontic process. I wanted to transfer the prostheses in this state. Using the implants in the anterior and using the Lucia jig method, I decided the CR and VD. This is the PMMA that was made. I designed it so that anterior guidance and canine guidance come out well, and I watched how well the patient is adjusting. If the patient says it's okay, I will copy it and make it. I took a picture in the oral cavity. You can see that the occlusal surface is tilted slightly. In this case, use the pre-preparation function to designate the teeth, delete them, and in the real view menu, I check the horizontal relations. I overlaid it and marked the tilted teeth with a cross. I color scanned it and moved it to pre-prep scan. And I changed the angle to my liking. I placed the altered PMMA in the oral cavity and had him use it during the six months while doing the orthodontic treatment. Then I made it into the final prosthesis with zirconia. This is the initial visit. This is six months after and a year after. After a year, the patient's smile became very natural looking. Before six months ago, I thought I had set the smile line right. The smile line went up a little. But still, it looked very natural. So, using the pre-prep scan, you can easily and more comfortably move the occlusion in the oral cavity to the patient's actual final prosthesis. That was it for today. Thank you.